What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. And we are just now starting our 2035 to 2036 off season. And I think there's going to be a big push this off season. I have kind of been going through offline and looking some at some things. Uh, I think we're going to move on from a few players. We're not going to offer them arbitration and or we're going to try to trade them prior to the arbitration hearings and then uh, might possibly look at trading either a prospect or something like that to uh, like a prospect or like a young player that's in the major leagues right now. Uh, I've mentioned a couple times that we have kind of bottlenecked in certain spots. So in order to maybe use that bottleneck to our benefit, I think it's it's conceivable that uh, we could make a trade to get rid of one of our better prospects or one of our better young players and allow the prospect to come up if we think the prospect might be better. Um, something like that. I've been kind of toying with the idea, just trying to figure out something else I could do, uh, change something else. Uh, for the last few years, I've kind of liked where the team is. And for whatever reason, we just can't get over that hump. You know, we're producing solid seasons, uh, winning seasons, five in a row now. Um, but for some reason, only two playoff appearances to show from that. So it... It is what it is, and we have to move some things around, maybe change some things up to just kind of get over that that hump, if you will. So I've been looking at some things. Uh, I'll toy around with it a little bit more and just kind of see what's out there, and, and I'll let you guys know what happens. Um, but, yeah, it's kind of where we're at. Uh, decision time. We do have some decision or a decision really to make. Um, just like last year, we have to figure out what we want to do with Taj Bradley. This year, he'll if I accept this option year, he'll be making $9 million and he will be 35 years old. Uh, last year, he did well to start the season and then he just kind of tapered off towards the end of the season and wound up with a 4.73 ERA. Um, just slightly better than he did the year before. He did pitch 20 extra innings in the same amount of starts, 31 starts, uh, but all in all, wasn't a great year. Uh, I would say it's a below average year for a starting pitching, a starting pitcher. And I just I took a shot on him last year just because I, I think we we needed him severely, uh, but this year. I am not going to exercise his option. I'm going to let him go to free agency and deal with that. Maybe he is cheaper in free agency and I can re-sign him for a cheaper deal. Maybe I can. I will consider that because he has been fairly consistent for us. Uh, he did have, um, you know, 2033 and 2032 didn't pitch for fully for us um well in 2032 it was a salt lake city but in the 2033 he got injured i believe and only pitched in 19 starts but the last two years he has given us 31 starts um which is right at, right what you want for a starting pitcher so i do respect the fact that he takes the ball every fifth day and goes but i just can't keep nine million dollars on my payroll for a five era and I think that's just kind of what he's turned into. I think we can supplement him or supplement someone that could be something like him and a fraction of the cost and produce very similar results. So I am going to not exercise this deal and let him test out free agency. Um, so we will avoid that contract and move on. Uh, we did get a new budget. It is $2 million more than last year, although all of the money and everything looks kind of wonky right now. Um, now that I got 
Taj Bradley's contract back at 8.5, we we were sitting around like $400,000 available. Um, that's going to change though because we are going to change some things up on uh, who we offer arbitration to. We're going to look at, at uh, potentially trading some of these guys that are arbitration eligible to get some money off the books and or if they, we can't trade them then I will just let them go to free agency um, some guys like the like Artem Alvarado 11 million dollars he is projected to make uh, if we're not going to pay Taj Bradley nine million dollars for a five ERA I'm definitely not going to pay Artem Alvarado for a five ERA all but one year he has had over a four ERA, um, and that was in 2033. He had a 3.7 ERA, so um, not really in the business of that. I like the fact he's a ground ball pitcher and things like that, but he has no control. He walks like five batters per nine. Um, does strike out a lot of guys, but it's just it's not working out for me uh, for for him. So I think maybe he's got some trade value. Um, I can look over here real quick. I could be totally wrong, but let's see what happens here. Quite a bit of trade value here. Uh, so I will definitely go through this. I am sure there's something in here that I will be okay with taking off the books and going on with. Um, there's probably something out here that I'll take. But... Yeah, things that I need to do offline because I'm not going to bore you guys with going through every single player and just seeing who I like. But he's definitely on my chopping block. Not going to pay him $11 million in arbitration. It's just not going to happen. Um, I've looked at a couple of other players. I believe Dakota Meredith. Uh, he is arbitration eligible too. Just under four million dollars, but he had a negative two war last year, so I think it's conceivable that I might move on from him. I have guys in the minor leagues that could easily come up and uh, play first base and or DH. That's what he was doing, and that I think would probably do better at that. Um, but you know, it's just a matter of what's available out there. Looks like he's got okay trade value. Quite a few options there probably can find something that we like um, like right off the bat he's that's just as good but plays better defense um, you know something that's cheaper and doesn't have to be younger but just some cheaper options um, I'm not even opposed to this like I don't like the fact that he's got bad financial ambition and leadership but uh, just a variety of things I could look at. Uh, even this guy's better than Meredith, in my opinion. So I'll look around and see what's out there. But at the end of the day, like he's definitely on the cho chopping block, if you will. And then uh, I love Sechka, but I need a new captain. Uh, Sechka is just not not great, and he's only on the team because he is the captain of the team. And I think that's very necessary. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where we're at. Definitely some guys that that could easily be moved around. And I'm going to probably take advantage of that. Um, not probably. I'm going to take advantage of that and try to get, you know, something similar in return or a prospect or a depth player. Like just something that benefits the team that's massively cheaper that allows me to focus that money maybe to a free agent signing hopefully free agent will be better this free agency will be better this year or I could go out and get a trade and use that money in a trade um, but at the end of the day I'm trying to cut some cut some dead weight and um, trim the fat if you will of just players that are just making too much money and it's potentially holding us back uh, so yeah that's kind of where we're at on that and the other thing that we had to look at is I did lose my assistant GM and also my pitching coach. So not a big deal for the assistant GM. I do need to go look and try to find a pitching coach. 
And then also I got to look and see what we're going to do in the development lab. So I'm going to go do those things. I'll fill you in on the back end on who I put in the development lab and who I gave offers to to be the GM and pitching coach. All right, uh, we have set up our development lab. We'll go through these real quick and uh, show you who I have put into the lab to try to boost their ratings here this off season. Uh, first and foremost is Luis Doodles Castillo. Uh, really the last thing he needs is his power. He will be making the major league roster this year. It's one of the reasons that uh, I'm thinking about making some trades. Uh, but uh, I do like Castillo uh, on the team. And, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see if we can get that power the last little bit to 60. And uh, hopefully that will help him in our season next year in the major leagues. Uh, next is Juan Super Gremlin Cisneros. Uh, we're going to try to work on his quality of contact. Uh starting to develop uh, he had been stuck in double and low a for three years and then last year he really started doing well and then uh, i moved him up to high a ball and again he performed well there's an argument maybe he's close uh, to being ready for double a we'll see how this development lab goes and how he looks next year but uh, I think it's very possible that he starts the year in double-A. If he doesn't, he will be in double-A probably rather quickly. And then um, not too far off from triple-A as well. But he is our uh, big third base prospect. Super excited to see him get to the major leagues. He's our number 25 overall prospect. So we're trying to invest a little bit in him. And um, it says he's a third baseman. I, I should say that he's not but um it, it's more looking like he's a first baseman but either way dh kind of guy um with a lot of pop and that is kind of what we're needing we talked about that uh, we need a lot of pop on our team or to increase that a little bit and he would definitely help us with that and not only give us the pop but also hit for average so could be a pretty devastating um DH in our lineup and then first baseman as uh, a backup to fill in for um, Danny Fouts. Next is a Bobby Mercurio. Um, more than likely will be on the major league staff this year. We did not pick up Taj Bradley's option and this is one of the reasons why we did not. He is right there and in the trip in triple a i ended the season for him in triple a uh, one could argue he's probably needs a little bit of time there with the you know the slider and the curveball and that sinker being average or below average the changeup, which is the one that hardly takes forever to develop um surprisingly is a 70 so he's got a devastating change up and potentially a devastating fastball i uh, really could have four really good pitches so really excited to see him in the big leagues he is 23 years old and our third round pick a few years ago uh, did only have one start in triple a but his double a and single a this past two seasons have been dominant so by all accounts i'm sure he would be just fine in triple a and probably is ready for the major leagues he is fragile so we'll have to monitor that but nonetheless do expect him to probably contend for a spot if not be it in the rotation this coming up season next is diomni balke another guy that could very well contend to be in the rotation he did pitch the entire season in a double a again this year um definitely good enough for triple a yeah, it's really close for um, major league level uh, I'm going to go ahead and put him in AAA a while before I forget um, we'll see I think he's fine he's got good movement, good Babbitt uh, if he gets this filled out all the way 
he'll have you know good stuff decent control and then he could have three pitches he might only have two pitches we'll see how that change up does but um would like to have him on the major league pitching staff whether it's in the form of starting pitching or the bullpen that's to be determined but i think he could very well be in the major league uh, staff for us next year but we're going to work on that secondary pitch movement uh try to get that change up developed and maybe a cutter and curveball as well so we'll see but uh, hope for the best next is carl medina uh international free agent we had back in 2031 and he has started to perform well uh, i shouldn't say start he's always performed well but his stats or ratings are starting to develop and he's at that 21 year year old mark so we should see some maybe some improvement defensively he's ready uh he can steal bases he's got great speed just lacking a little bit on the uh the hitting side um not going to be an overpowering guy but going to be a solid like second baseman for us and can provide a lot of speed with some stolen bases hopefully uh doesn't have a great amount of stealing ability but nonetheless does have speed um, so we are going to try and increase his quality of contact to try to get him ready for the major leagues currently he sits in uh, high a ball i moved him up after the um off season or after the season ended i do remember that so that's what he looks like in high a should be fine and then next year start off in high a and then we could bump him to double a maybe triple a and he could be in the big leagues in about two years i would say he needs um, we will see though next is chris debose uh, we're looking at improving his control as you can see it's 40 out of 50 right now we think we can get that up there he's 21 almost 22 years old uh, another guy that's just super close to being potentially major league ready and I think could could really contend for some bullpen um, time for us. He holds on runners well, so we like that. He has decent stamina, um, so he could definitely start. Uh, not going to hit a ton of home runs, which are not going to allow a ton of home runs, which is what we've been struggling with lately. If we can get that control up to 50, and uh, have that home run allowed rating develop a little bit more. I think we're going to be in business. I did move him to high A as well as he dominated low A this year at a 2.61 ERA. <clears throat> he actually went from rookie to low A and then I moved him to high A uh, at the end of the season. He also throws a lefty. So looking to get that control up. Next is Eric Guerra. Same thing. He's really close, trying to get the control up. That's what we're working on this year. Get those walk rates down. Um, hung out in AAA. Had 30 starts with a 4.19 ERA. Not great, but he did walk four batters per nine innings. And gave up over a home run per nine innings. So trying to see if we can't help him with that, with the control. And um, get him ready for the major leagues, hopefully. All right, next is, last but not least, Mr. Jesus Aguilar, the youngest guy in our development lab, but um, just drafted him this past year, second our second round, our 69th overall pick. Just going to try to get his development going. Uh, I mentioned last year in the development lab that a lot of people were saying the younger guys never really did well in the development lab that it was more majority of the older guys that would go through development lab and be successful i'm going to try it out with the younger guy now and uh he's got good work ethic and i think he's a good candidate uh so we're just going to give him a hard development lab program with quality contact and see if we can't get his development started early uh, but yeah, that is the 2035 offseason development lab. 
Um, hopefully we can have similar to better results than we did last year. I believe last year we were four out of the eight. Hopefully we can get four or five this time as well and uh, keep that going. I think that's a fairly decent um, percentage of successes. I, I don't know what it should be, but I think I'm okay with 50 to 60 percent um, success rate. I think that's probably about what the game average is at, but I could be wrong on that. Um, but yeah, that is the development lab. And then I'll show you guys real quick who I um, offered the assistant GM job to and the pitching coach job, as well as I didn't mention it, but my hitting coach also retired in the Florence low A team. So I added Maximo Mendez. I offered him. He teaches Hitting outstanding, uh, handles aging average, uh, that's okay uh, down in low A. You don't have to really worry about aging. Uh, he influences mechanics, that's outstanding rating, and handles development as excellent. So I did offer him a four-year contract and uh, just waiting on a response. Next is Mr. Rich Clark. Uh, same thing, outstanding pitching teacher, handles aging good, how standing uh, at influencing mechanics and is legendary at development and he is going to be our major league pitching coach pending his response and then the assistant manager really nothing to talk about they really don't do anything but uh it was like he was a manager at one point in the minor leagues with the birmingham barons and the charlotte knights but other than that uh Never really been in the major leagues, but I'm going to give him a chance to be a GM. They don't really play a role in much of anything, but he has decent to above average teaching ability at just about everything. So <laughs> I don't know if that matters. I don't know what the GM really does or the assistant GM does, but nonetheless, uh, that is a position on the team. So those are the three coaching contracts that I have sent out. I have not got anything back because I still have not sent it ahead. Um, I am going to start sending it ahead though and uh, kind of doing my offline trade looks and potentials uh, like we talked about in the beginning of the episode. So allow me to do that and uh, I will check in with you guys once we move this thing forward. And before I do that, uh, just so you know, I didn't I did send it ahead a couple of days, but nothing has happened. I did tell you guys that I was going to go through a recap, and I completely forgot to do that, um, a recap of everyone's seasons. So I'll do that real quick, and uh, we will start with the pitching. Starting rotation, Matt Simbrat had 33 starts, went 15-8 and eight with a 4.21 ERA. So not great, but, but not terrible either. Um, definitely an uptick since his last... Um, or his first season with us at a 3.49. So hopefully next year he can bring that back down in the threes. He's got all the stuff to to make it happen for whatever reason. Just couldn't put it together last year. Good enough to get his av or get his ERA back down into the threes. But definitely will be probably our ace going into the season. Arturo Avalos again. Uh, it was his first year of rookie season with us, 5-3 and three in 22 starts, which is wild. He had 22 starts and only 8 decisions, um, but did have a 4.15 ERA. Not terrible. Um, again, kind of a, a pitching theme, right? Uh, we just struggled with ERA, but as you can see, has above average or average to above average stuff with above average movements control and things like that so uh, hopefully that will change or will help him next year he did give up uh one and a half home runs per nine i feel like that number is a little high giving his rating that is a 60 currently so i think next year should be a better year for him all right, next is Daniel Ramondi, um, a 2.88 ERA in 16 starts. In total, he pitched in 62 games because you might as well remember, but he started off the season as my stopper and did excellent, but we just needed to make some moves 
from the starting rotation because it was just so terrible and we moved him into the starting rotation and he was uh, pretty much lights out uh, so uh, 15 and 5 with a 2.88 ERA and uh, with a 151 WR ERA plus and in 10 or in 16 starts he had 10 quality starts so definitely um, a pretty solid one two three punch in our rotation i think that's a really solid one two three punch next is taj bradley we talked about him 4.73 era but will not be returning next year and we will have to replace him next is dong hyung im who had a better season than the year prior um, still giving up quite a bit of home runs at 2.1 per nine only walking 2.8 per nine though so that's quite a lot are quite a bit better than the majority of the um, pitching staff, but the home runs are killing him, and uh, ultimately is why his ERA can't stay below that four mark. It seems like for a while he had it down there, but it just kind of creeped up on us at the very end of the season. Went to a 4.31. His Sierra was a 2.65, so that's good, um, but nonetheless. Not my first choice, but I think for like a back end of the rotation, like a fifth starter, he's definitely viable and um, is going to make a little bit of money this year at 3.2. But again, at $3.2 million is a lot better than the $9 million I was going to give Taj Bradley to give me a five ERA. So again, saving some money, I'll probably keep him just because... um, I, I don't want to have to replace two starters. I can try to just replace the one and um, limit the amount of moves I have to make in order just to get two starters. So, um, and again, a back end of the rotation guy, I think it's perfectly conceivable that, that he could be a fifth starter. All right, uh, next is the bullpen. Um, one disappointment this year, although he had 39 saves, uh, was Jeff Middleton. Definitely his worst season by far in the major leagues at a 4.65 ERA. He was 3-12. and He had 39 saves, like I mentioned, which was the most in his career. Um, so that's good, but at the end of the day, he gave up a lot of wins and blew a lot of saves. So... We do have him under contract for two or be three point five million next year. We have him quite a while till twenty forty one. So hopefully we can get a bounce back year from him. If I have to, I can move him out of the closer role and just make him a, a setup guy. We'll see what we have at the end of the season or at the end of the off season. And um, if I got to go with him as a closer again, so be it. I know he can do it. He showed me last year at two point four eight. Um, but he's also just pitched well. This was by far his worst year. So I think we're going to be all right with Jeff Middleton. I just think maybe this was like a one-off season. Eric Emanuel is next. Setup guy. Again, um, kind of a mixed bag type of guy here. He's a fly ball pitcher, but somehow only gave up less than a home run per nine. Um, so it's a little weird how that worked out. But he also walked almost six per nine. So, again, walks and home runs have killed us, and it is what it is. But we're probably going to need him next year. He is going to make $4 million. So, if there's an option for me to replace him, I will. Um, But we might have to just sit through this one next year because he is a lefty. Um, And. I'll have to go through my minor leagues and see what's coming up and what's going to be ready in the the form of major league ready for the bullpen. Maybe free agency can help too. Um, Steve Reeves is next, the other setup guy. Uh, great season, 2.45 ERA with 13 holds and 55 innings. So nothing to complain about Steve. And uh, he will be making almost $5 million next year. You could say that this his stuff is uh, below average, and I would not disagree with you at all, but he has pitched well, 
in the three seasons that he's been here. So it's like something tells me that the ratings may not be right. I don't know. <laughs> Next is Artem Alvarado. We talked about him. More than likely going to try to trade him. Um, we'll see. Next is Jonathan Myers. Did really well for us. Can also throw in there as a spot start. But a 2.38 ERA in 25 games. Nothing to complain about from Mr. Jonathan Myers. All right. Next is, if I can get to the screen, uh, Jim Barry. Didn't play with us a lot this year, just 10 games, and he had a 5.3 ERA. So he's the guy that kind of bounces back and forth from us to AAA. Although that was the last year that he will do that because he will be out of options. So definitely a decision to make on him. Maybe we trade him. Maybe we just stash him in AAA. Or maybe he makes the pitching rotation for or the pitching staff, whether it be in the rotation or in the bullpen. More than likely in the bullpen. But you never know. All right. Next we have William Schmidt. A 4.26 ERA. Um, again, gives up a lot of home runs, walks a lot of guys, just things that we don't need on the team. He has got good leadership, work ethic, and intelligent, but at some point in time, results matter and doesn't really have them. This was his second best year with us. Um, every single year, though, he's been in the fours in ERA. So, again, bullpen type of guy, but not the top of my list. I would like to maybe get someone else and especially since he's going to be making close to $4 million. All right, next is Marquise Bess, who will be a free agent. Um, just not going to be able to pay them $5 million. I think that he wanted $5 million for like three or four years. And his next contract has been great for us as a lefty specialist, but when you only pitch 34 innings a year and I give you $4 million or $5 million, uh, I think that's a little off, if, if you ask me. But he did do well for us, and we appreciate him um, being our lefty specialist for the last few years. All right, last but not least down here is Ethan Wheeler. Uh, not a bad season last year. Actually, by far his best season with us, a 3.81 in 37 games and 54 innings. So definitely a solid season. Um, is walking too many guys, four per nine and only giving up that one home run per nine. So he's more on the walk side of things where we have issues. But all in all, not a bad year. And he will be making roughly $2 million next year after arbitration. So fully expect to see him back. Uh, that is the pitching staff. Now let's go through the lineup. All right. Uh, real quick, Akira Hosoda. Um, just a backup catcher, played in 45 games, five home runs, 20 RBIs, hit 226. Purely a backup guy, decent defense, not much offense. Um, has arbitration this year, only going to make 1.7. Potentially could look to get someone else, we'll see. But uh, that defense, $1.7 million, is probably worth it for a backup guy that is you know, a good clubhouse guy. Uh, but we'll see what is out there. Uh, Vicente Jasso, obviously our main guy, probably going to win another gold glove his fourth straight as he was a fourth time, four-time All-Star in his four seasons. Four full seasons, I should say. But last year, more of the same. 23 home runs, 86 RBI, 64 runs, 16 doubles, um, a 285 average, 337 on-base percentage, and a 116 WRC plus with a 4.6 war. Uh, definitely a great catcher, probably one of the best in the game, and um, we're paying him a pretty, pretty good fraction of the cost. That next year he will be making only ten million dollars. This year he made seven, um, and then it'll bump up a year after that, and then the highest it'll be is in 2038 at 16 million for probably the best catcher in the game. So uh, can't complain. That contract has turned out to be amazing so far. Next is Dakota Meredith. We talked about him, the 225 average, a negative war. Uh, arbitration is going to be around $4 million. We're definitely looking at moving him, especially with all of our bats in the minor leagues. So I think he is on the chopping block. 
So is Gunnar Sechka. As much as I'd hate to get rid of the captain, um, it just might be time. But we'll see what's out there. He's just really not providing much for us. Yeah, he's a backup second baseman and, and shortstop. But, I mean, 37 games, hit 242 with a home run and nine RBIs, nothing crazy. Uh, he's purely on the team because of his captain personality. All right, next is Javorski Elaine Jr. Um, pretty solid season, 11 home runs, 67 RBIs, 67 runs, 26 stolen bases with a 290 average and a 355 on base percentage, 114 WRC plus with a 3.4 war. So a solid season for him. Also eligible for arbitration at $6 million. Next is... Michi Yoshu Inoue. <laughs> I don't ever know how to pronounce it. I sound so stupid when I do. Um, yeah, just kind of like a backup third baseman slash whatever. Uh, two, 240 average, 17 home runs, 44 RBIs, 95 WRC plus with a 0.5 war. So right there at replacement level. Um, only making a million dollars. I feel like that's a pretty good deal. And also hits left-handed and can steal the bases if he gets on. So I feel like it's a pretty good deal. We'll see what else is out there. But most likely we'll be returning to the Major League roster. Brendan Rohr was the next one. Uh, played in 147 games. Only hit six home runs. But that's obvious from the power. 58 RBIs. 56 runs. And um, coincidentally only struck out 79 times. So that's good uh stole seven bases hit 277 with a 320 on base percentage 992 wrc plus and a 1.8 war so again right around league average to slightly above arbitration this year it looks like he could make around 3.5 million dollars all right next is isaac cardenas um 22 home runs 77 rbis 70 runs, 257 average with a 310 on base percentage, a 107 or 103, excuse me, WRC plus with a 3.3 war. Just kind of our super utility guy. Um, not going to be doing crazy things, but I'll take that from a utility guy that 22 home runs and uh, going to give it kind of, kind of expensive at 5.5 million. So I got a decision to make on that one too. All right, next is Nate Aguilar. Hit well for us this year, 298, 334 on base percentage, had 32 stolen bases. Uh, only a 94 WRC plus, probably because there are zero home runs and a 1.5 war. Again, no home runs, drives a lot of things. Played in 120 games, had over 500 at bats, and only struck out 57 times. So definitely a good one two punch up there at the top of the lineup as far as guys getting on base next is mike flores who turned it on towards the end of the season struggled to start but ultimately wound up with a very similar season than last year 25 home runs 82 rbis a 265 average did steal 11 bases with a 124 wrc plus and a 4.7 war Next is Tim Vox, very kind of limited sample size, but only 42, 42 games, five home runs, 19 RBIs, 221 average. Just need more time, I think, for, for him to play, and, and things will trend in the right direction, but more than likely going to be the fourth, fifth outfielder next year. Has decent fielding ability in the corners, uh, but looks to be a pretty respectable bat off the bench, maybe even a DH. We'll see. All right, next is Mason Davis. Uh, pretty decent season. Finally got another full season out of him. Um, 143 hits, 27 home runs, 101 RBIs, uh, 85 runs. Did strike out less than 200 times, so there's that. Stole 27 bases, so he's a 27-27 club. And hit 254 with a 317 on base percentage, a 106 WRC plus, and a 4.7 WAR. 
So it could win another gold glove, but definitely doing well as far as maintaining his ratings. I hope that continues for several years to come. Um, but yeah, pretty excited with Mason's career. It's not been as good as I thought it was or thought it was going to be at first, but he still maintained uh, for the most part. He did reach that 200 home run mark. Now he's at 205. He fell two hits short of the 1,000 hit mark, so he would definitely get that quickly in the next season. And uh, he's got a career 35.2 war currently at 29 years of age. All right, last but not least, Mr. Kevin Herman. Uh, struggled a little bit this year, 235 home runs, 33 RBIs in 78 games. Definitely had a negative, a negative war. Um, so would like to keep him in the, the lineup or in the rotation as far as outfielders, but need a little bit more out of him offensively, but he's got everything else that I need. So potentially, um, we'll be on the team again next year as well, as far as the active 26 man roster but yeah that is all of the batters and pitchers so that's the recap some guys had some solid seasons others not so much but for the majority i think everyone had a pretty solid season which is uh indicative of our 89 and 73 record we were a pretty good ball club so just couldn't get in the playoffs <laughs> I'm never going to forget about that. Oh, it's so annoying. But is what it is. That uh, That is the recap. And now let's move on. I actually skipped over Danny Fouts in our recap. And I have no idea how because he's obviously like our best player. Um, but I'll give you his stats real quick. Led the league in, in hits at 190. That's two years in a row he's done that. He led the league in doubles at 65. He had 65 doubles. That's insane. Um, he also led the league in stolen bases at 53 stolen bases. Uh, only hit five home runs. Obviously, doesn't hit a ton of home runs, um, but 48 RBIs. Uh, hit four triples as well. Uh, 304 average with a 127 WRC plus and a 4.7 WAR. So overall seems to be his best season considering his war is the highest so um, another great year 27 years old got him for 13 million dollars for or will be 14 million dollars for the next four seasons and then an 18 million dollar season and then back to team options at 16 million dollars so we were very successful in this contract as well so Hopefully, uh, he continues to produce like this for years to come and uh, puts up some numbers that are, are worthy of a call from uh, Cooperstown. But got to keep playing, and hopefully he can stay healthy. All right, it is November, and I just checked the time on this episode. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and end this episode. Uh, it is getting to that point where I like to cut it off, not get too much longer and that long-winded. Um, this was a lot going on in this epo episode as far as uh, just recaps and, and things like that and things we need to do this off season. Um, so I'll end the episode. What I'm gonna do though is offline, I am gonna look at some trades and maybe in the next episode, we'll throw some offers out there and make some trades Potentially, uh, I have talked about how I felt like we're kind of bottlenecked up in the outfielding position, and maybe we can we can use that to our advantage and get us one more pitcher, a starter for us to to replace Bradley or a really good uh, guy in the bullpen. We'll see. Um, I would prefer a starter, um, but. We'll see what's out there. I know I've talked about some of the guys that I'm looking at trading, so um, I will do that kind of offline, and then when we come back in the next episode, we'll we'll see what comes to fruition and and those, and see if we can't get something done to get us over over the hump, so to speak. 
but yeah, let's uh, go ahead and end the episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.